In this video, we're going to learn how to adjust Hunter's PGP, PGP Ultra, and I-20. They all have similar mechanisms, and we're going to learn how to adjust it, and then we're going to replace a nozzle. So let's talk about the top of the head first. There's three things that we need to be concerned about. One is the little nub here with an arrow on it, and this is where we access our nozzle retention screw right there. We have another piece just to the left of there that we're going to insert the top of our hunter key in there, turn it 90 degrees, and that's how we pull it up if we need to access the head to change the nozzle. And over here we have the adjustment mechanism. We insert the top of our key down into there till you feel its seat, and if we turn it counterclockwise, it is negative, meaning that it takes away from our left hand limit. So we'll talk about this in a second, but if we turn this clockwise, it's going to add to our left hand limit. So there's two things we're going to adjust here. The first is the arc, which is the back and forth movement of the head as it oscillates from right to left, and also the radius, and we're going to adjust the screw here to shorten our radius down or extend it to its full length. So what we're dealing with on the hunter head is that its right limit is fixed, meaning that the gears are set down in the head that we can adjust to the left limit back and forth, but the right limit is set in the head. So if we need to adjust this right limit to fine tune it, we're going to have to physically turn the entire head on its fitting. Now, there's three different ways that you might find a head attached. One may be hard piped, like you see here. It may be a nipple or a male adapter that it's attached to. The most popular way that it's generally attached is with a flex pipe and then a barb by threaded fitting here. On the bottom of these heads is a female three-quarter inch outlet and so this screws down on here so when we're turning this it's actually turning the head on its fittings you may also see a swing joint but that's for you know higher pressures and generally commercial systems will have this you're probably not going to see it on a residential system so what we're trying to do is turn the right limit so let's turn the head on here first let's just observe it now it's going towards its right limit and we see it click and then start to turn back. Now this has a little slip to it to where you can advance this back and forth, but don't be fooled into thinking that you're seeing exactly where it's going to stop. The fine tune adjustment, I generally turn it about 75% of its travel, let the gears engage and then carry it over to the limit. You're going to hear it click or just see it stop and then reverse path and then you can see exactly where that limit is instead of turning it with your hand. So if we need to adjust this, best case scenario is we're gonna grip this shaft. Now, it, this is not turning, only the top part, and then turn this physically. This is attached all the way down to the bottom in the gears, so we can turn this physically. The next best thing that we can do is dig up the top of the head and then use a set of channel lock pliers to grab the body and make your adjustments that way. You can also take this apart and pull this whole bit out and move it around and drop it into different gear notches to adjust that. It's a more difficult technique. It takes several times to get it just right and sometimes there's not the fine tune adjustment that you can do. But otherwise, if you can't do it with your hand, just dig up the top part of the head. Now, generally, this is going to be buried into the ground up to here. So, you know, dig up the top part of the head and then either grab it with your hand or a pair of channel locks and then make your fine tune adjustment on your right limit. And then we're going to see what our left limit is and see where we want it. Let's turn this a little bit this way. So we're going to watch it go over here and hit its left limit. I'll set it up there and then watch it go. Okay, we see it hit its limit, so if we want to bring it in this way, which is a subtraction of the arc, we put our tool in here, fill its seat, and then turn it counterclockwise, which is gonna bring the arc in this way. As we can see, it's brought it back. We can bring it back quite a bit more. And if we want to add to the arc, then we go clockwise with our tool and it will add arc to it. Now, if we want to change our radius, 
as it stands now, we see it shooting at full length because there's a screw here that's holding the nozzle in, but it's not impeding the flow of water. If we put our tool down here and engage the hex key part of this into the top of the nozzle retention screw and start to run it down to where it impedes the water, it's going to flatten the stream out and widen it. Or we can do the reverse and then open it back up and all we're doing is pulling the screw back enough where it's not impeding the water. Okay, so how do we put a nozzle in or change the nozzle? I've taken it off the fitting here just so we can see it a little bit better. So we're going to take the top part of our key, put it in the slot there, turn it 90 degrees and pull up. And you can hold this up with hand strength, but if you don't quite have enough hand strength, they make a little tool that clamps on there. But if you've got moderate hand strength, it's not really a big deal. But as we see here, there is a screw holding this nozzle in. So what we're going to do is take our hex key. And we're going to run this screw back out of there just enough to where it's not going to catch the nozzle. If you're going to remove an existing nozzle, sometimes you've got to get a little bit rough with it there and pull it out. And that's one of the blue nozzles, but Hunter has two different sets of nozzles, a blue and a red. So we've got one of the red ones here. So I'm going to take this off from the nozzle tree. We've talked about a nozzle tree in other videos. But when you put this in, it's got a couple of little grooves here, and you're going to have to line that up with the top of where the the screw comes in. It's not a big deal. It just goes down at an angle. Just line those little fins up, push it in, and then run your screw back down and make sure that it doesn't impede the flow unless that's what you want it to do. But generally you'll do that during the adjustment process. And there we go.